as we immerse ourselves in the Agricultural Review 2023, we're exploring a year of transformative initiatives that have sculpted St. Lucia's agricultural landscape. Let's dive into the main stories which seamlessly weave together to unveil our journey of growth and resilience. A vision for a major transformation within the industry materialized as the Ministry of Agriculture introduced a revised agriculture policy framework and strategy igniting change to reduce the island's food import bill, invigorate agri-food fisheries livelihoods and make the sector more appealing to the youth while simultaneously addressing ongoing challenges and threats to the sector such as climate change, limited fiscal resources and the need for increased productivity and competitiveness. This policy is supposed to run from the year 2023 to 2030 in tandem with the 2030 Sustainable Goals Development Agenda. Therefore, the Ministry is ensuring that we meet those international milestones and the commitments that we signed up for. As our journey unfolded, a pivotal milestone awaited as the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development collaborated with the Caribbean Development Bank to enhance climate resilience through the Breakfast Project, signifying a transformative shift towards sustainability in the agricultural sector. It includes a number of capacity building initiatives, training for the farmers, climate smart agriculture, and a number of other support areas to really, really boost the agricultural sector. And based on my discussion with the, the, the colleagues from the CDB, they were very happy with where St. Lucia is at this time. The Division of Plant Research and Development hosted a workshop for exporters, which served as a pivotal platform to comprehensively understand potential challenges and learn effective management strategies. Emphasizing the specific requirements of importing countries, particularly those relevant to St. Lucian farmers, the workshop provided exporters with guidelines to meet international expectations and comply with stringent plant health standards. We have had some challenges over the years where we have had consignments being detained in the UK for several reasons, um, because of perhaps changes to the declarations, changes to regulations, and we have seen it fit to bring all our stakeholders together to ensure that they do understand what the changes are and how we can eliminate some of those challenges that we had to deal with over the years. The agriculture sector bore the brunt of Tropical Storm Brett. The industry suffered substantial losses and disruptions across various subsectors. The banana sector being the hardest hit, suffering an estimated 75% loss. In response, the Ministry of Agriculture initiated a comprehensive assessment to quantify the damages and develop effective strategies for assisting farmers in their recovery efforts. We had a situation in Region 4, that's Miku, where 1,400 chicks, two weeks old, two weeks old chicks, were completely lost by that farmer. 18 greenhouses were damaged. We had 41 acres of vegetables that were also impacted. Also, the Seymour subsector, you know how the tide was and I mean, the, the, a lot of the damage was on the Atlantic side, which is where we are most of our Seymour farmers. And a lot of those farmers suffered damage as a result of the storm surge. So the agricultural sector is in a bad situation especially our banana sector where we were struggling a bit to meet the demand of the regional market where we are supposed expected to supply about 15,000 boxes sorry per week and we are only half of that so obviously that storm would have been a setback for our banana farmers in a significant move to aid the recovery efforts of farmers following the impact of hurricane brett the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development partnered with the National Fair Trade Organization NFTO, to provide vital input subsidies to banana and plantain farmers. This collaboration signifies a momentous step as the government extended its support beyond conventional boundaries, recognizing the pivotal role played by plantain farmers in the agricultural sector. Through the newly established subsidy program, 
both banana and planted farmers received essential supplies, including two 50 kg bags of fertilizer per acre and two liters of nematicide per acre. This comprehensive package addressed the immediate requirements of farmers, particularly in revitalizing the health and productivity of their crops. In response to the risks posed by climate change in the agricultural sector, the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development organized a training program on financial literacy and microinsurance as part of the Building Effective Human Resilience Project. This collaborative initiative of the International Labour Organization provided comprehensive knowledge on financial planning, budgeting, risk assessment and microinsurance benefits, enabling farmers to make more informed decisions and safeguard their livelihoods. We saw that the Ministry of Agriculture is really poised um, to help bring development within the agriculture sector in, in this in this country. And I mean, piggybacking off of um, the disasters that has happened over the years and recently with Tropical Storm Brett, um, we saw the need to really come in to help build the capacity of the farmers. And we saw that it was important that the trainings um, be tailored towards their needs, you know, um, to boost the agricultural sector within within this country and within the region. Intensifying this support towards the agriculture sector, the Taiwan Technical Mission collaborated to support St. Lucia's food security agenda. Providing much needed relief to farmers grappling with escalating costs, this initiative marked a collective stride towards securing the nation's agricultural future. To address the urgent need for food security and to alleviate the burden on farmers, Regions 1 and 3 hosted a subsidized agricultural input seal throughout the year. As a flagship initiative of the second phase of the Seven Crops project, these events featured essential inputs such as crates, pit moss and fertilizers, which were essential for ensuring the successful growth of crops in St. Lucia. We recently provided support in the sum of $2.4 million EC dollars to assist farmers following the passage of the tropical storm because we knew very well how it impacted the planting and banana sector subsectors and we are very concerned that as a, as, a, as a country which needs to continue exporting bananas, a country that must feed itself, we are happy as a government, as a ministry, to provide that level of support to our farmers. Attention was also brought to Denry South as the Agriculture Ministry continued collaborative efforts with the Taiwan ICDF. Through outputs under the Seven Crops Project, program officers sought to introduce new technologies and crop varieties to farmers of that region. The demonstration on the farm owned by Kantia Samuel showcased the use of a tiller, highlighting the substantial reduction in labor and cost compared to manual work. With this small machine, I must say, before it would have been hard, um, back breaking for me, it would have cost me, say, like about $500 just to plow a small little plot of land with two guys. But now in less than two hours, we can plow you know, half an acre, just for just a little, just about say one forty, one hundred and forty dollars. On a neighboring farm, a trial was also observed in which the Seven Crops Project introduced new varieties of cucumbers to farmers. We are not, we are not trying to beat the varieties, the, the existing variety, which is tr tropic cuke. We are trying to compare to see if. Uh, the consumers can prepare their dishes in a different way uh, according to the characteristic of different varieties. Responding to the rising demand for ripe bananas, the banana sector's capacity expanded as the Agriculture Ministry officially transferred management of a banana ripening facility in Lakai Denry to the National Fair Trade Organization, a move anticipated to have a positive impact on the entire supply chain from farmers to consumers by promoting fairness, sustainability and quality in the production and distribution of bananas. The handing over of the ripening facility signifies a strategic move to enhance the banana industry by adding substantial value, responding to the robust demand for ripe bananas at both local and international levels. But if we understand the nutrition, nutritional value of ripe bananas, the role that ripe bananas play in terms of food security, you would understand the importance of this ceremony today. And I want to urge the NFTO to take full advantage of this opportunity, use it as a new revenue generating project 
to be able to allow the NFTU to become more sustainable. The Department of Plant Research and Development ran full steam ahead of its regional counterparts in building sensitization and awareness of the impact of the banana panama disease tropical race 4, TR4, a destructive fungal pathogen that poses a significant threat to banana and plantain crops. While this disease is not currently on island, local specialists deemed it necessary to equip banana farmers and industry stakeholders with the capacity to identify and effectively manage the virus should it pose a threat to the subsector. One intervention was the hosting of a tabletop simulation exercise, which brought key stakeholders together to create a coordinated response plan, enabling the country to react swiftly and effectively to prevent or manage any potential TR4 outbreak. After this simulation exercise, we will go back to the drawing board to ensure that we, we can close those gaps, look at all of the areas that we need to to strengthen in terms of our training of our extension officers, training of farmers, training um, to continue our communications out there, let persons know of the disease, let persons know of the risk of moving plant material and the need to inform the Ministry of Agriculture before they do so. Also we have developed a new portal on our web page where persons can go in and download information um, on TR4, any information that they would love in terms of how to safeguard their farms. Every, we have populated this website a bit and hopefully it can help farmers, travelers, um, extension officers, students, everybody to ensure that we keep St. Lucia free from TR4. <laughs> Shifting our focus to the amazing events put on by the Ministry, the exceptional importance and versatility of local agricultural produce took the spotlight. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development hosted the first ever Coconut and Cassava Festival, shedding light on the diversity and significance of these crops. The festival showcased the creativity and dedication of local farmers, artisans and entrepreneurs, offering a glimpse into the diverse uses of these locally grown products. There is always an opportunity for a number of new products coming on display from what we locally produce. But my concern is... I do not want you should really to see down those the products only when we have a festival. Because I want to see them on the supermarket the shelves, in the small shops, in the, the local, in the communities where our kids That's why and other persons can here. access them. Shifting from coconut and cassava to cocoa, the sector stepped into the limelight as the Agriculture Ministry, supported by the Taiwan Technical Mission, in a vibrant celebration of World Food Day 2023, hosted a cocoa festival in the picturesque town of Soufre, where cocoa enthusiasts and the wider public gathered to celebrate the country's rich cocoa heritage through a wide array of activities, including live cooking demonstrations and local musical entertainment. So I am very pleased at the projects that we have within the Ministry of Agriculture and supported by the Taiwan Mission to cause us to expand our acreage for cocoa because the quality of cocoa that we have here in St. Lucia is one of the top quality cocos. So let us appreciate what we have and let us ensure that we protect that crop. I vividly remember that in late December of last year, Taiwan government extended our funding support to the government of St. Lucia in implementing nine pivotal national development projects. Among them was the cocoa sector enhancement aiming at improving the well-being of the people of St. Lucia. Today, we stand here not only to celebrate St. Lucia's rich cocoa heritage, but also promote local products and sustainable agriculture practices. The flourishing cocoa industry, along with the ongoing ministry efforts within the sector, is expected to significantly enhance food and nutrition security and safeguard the health and well-being of our citizens of St. Lucia, as highlighted by the Ministry of Agriculture's Cocoa Festival. With the overarching goal of ensuring food security and creating sustainable livelihoods for all stakeholders involved, efforts were also made by the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development to underscore the importance of the agro-processing sector in national development. 
A meeting was held with agro-processors across St. Lucia, providing comprehensive insights into the prevailing dynamics of the agro-processing industry. A lot of what we produce here are exported, but we have to import them back into St. Lucia and we must do better than that as a ministry, as a government. There have been a number of calls to me. Why is it we have so much citrus wasting all over the place? We have mangoes wasting all over the place, but yet we import a lot of those products. I believe it is time for us to take stock of what we grow locally and find new innovative ways to get into small manufacturing plants that can make those products easily available to us locally. As organic farming continued to gain momentum globally, the Ministry of Agriculture joined forces with WUSC Caribbean and e, &E Agrochemicals in an exciting partnership aimed at advancing organic farming practices in St. Lucia. The partnership explored the efficacy of these inputs as an alternative to traditional chemical fertilizers and pesticides with a focus on promoting sustainable farming practices. What we are hoping to, to happen here is have the testimony from the farmers who are using these products because we heard some testimonies earlier on from you know, 7 tons to 14 tons or 7 truckloads to 14 truckloads of watermelons being harvested from these fields. And here we are, we are trialing watermelons, but the other areas we are trialing other crops like cucumbers. And um, of course, if we can have, uh, through the use of this product in a sustainable manner and through the use of this product in a cost-effective manner, if farmers can use this product, which is formulated here nationally in St. Lucia by a St. Lucian young, young entrepreneur, we, we anticipate to see an augmented input in productivity and as well as augmented um, output in aesthetics and quality of the product that is harvested. Further collaborations were made with WUSC to advance sustainable agriculture in the Caribbean, specifically focusing on pest control and disease management to fortify food security and economic resilience. We know that the diseases and the pests particularly affect your productivity, your yield, and the quality and standard of crop that you produce and bring to market. So all of that is an aim to improve the standard of produce, the capacity of the farmers, the yield of the farmers, the income of the farmers, and build on their livelihoods. The WUSC Sustainable Agriculture in the Caribbean project also delivered pest and disease management equipment to the Ministry of Agriculture as part of the ongoing commitment to enhance the agriculture sector's capacity and supporting the implementation of farmer field schools locally. Focused on managing pests like the sweet potato weevil, diamondback moth in cabbage and white fly, along with bacteria wilt in tomatoes, the program equipped producers with environmentally friendly pest trapping tools. We are elated to note that the SAC project aims at creating transformative, gender and youth inclusive, climate smart agricultural markets that are sustainable, profitable and competitive with under current and future climatic threats. This approach will provide a holistic perspective to managing the risk of climate change by addressing the adaptation needs of grassroots actors. The Agriculture Ministry was in receipt of inputs and equipment from the Taiwan Technical Mission as efforts were made to address the shortcomings of the agriculture sector. The second phase of the Seven Crops Project, a joint collaboration between the Agriculture Ministry and the Taiwan Technical Mission is in lockstep with CARICOM's 25 by 2025 initiative, which is aimed at reducing extra regional agri-food imports by 25% by 2025. The Seven Crops Project handed over inputs as well as battery-operated small machinery to the Agriculture Ministry as part of their efforts to create a more sustainable and appealing agriculture sector. The handing over ceremony also saw the recommencement of seedling production and distribution in an effort to further bridge the gap between supply and demand. Another milestone was achieved as the Ministry of Agriculture and the Taiwan Technical Mission, through the Seven Crops Project, teamed up with Massey Stores to train 20 Massey Stores staff in the receiving and dispatch of containers, setting a benchmark for food safety on the island. Over a six-week program, participants were equipped with invaluable expertise that will not only uphold, but further enhance quality and efficiency. As part of the program, each participant received a comprehensive food safety manual, specifically tailored for Massey stores. As we come here today to celebrate the end of this training, I want you to know there is 
is not the end of opportunity for growth for your staff members, just the end of the beginning. I would advise you to continue being committed to learn to learning like you have done for the past weeks in training, because knowledge is power. Through the Seven Crops project, over 70 participants commemorated the successful completion of a training on efficient production methods and sustainable farming techniques, heralding a promising and transformative future in the agricultural sector. Soil management, pest control, irrigation techniques, post-harvest handling and marketing strategies were among the topics covered in the training. This training is in keeping with the new thrust of the ministry. That is the overarching goal of ensuring both food security and nutrition. Therefore, your added collective contributions are essential for improving the food security status of our nation. Another area of training included aquaponics, which was brought to the fore as another innovative way of ensuring food security. The aquaponics training program led by technical experts of the Taiwan ICDF was designed to provide participants with an understanding of the sustainable and symbiotic method of farming that combines aquaculture and hydroponics, including its basic principles, benefits, and practical applications. The program culminated in a graduation ceremony where approximately 50 successful participants were awarded certificates of completion. A general technical cooperation agreement between the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture ICA, and the Taiwan International Cooperation and Development Fund ICDF, is set to usher in a new era of economic and social development, offering opportunities for the agriculture sector. The signing ceremony underscored the commitment of both ICA and ICDF to address the specific needs of the nation efficiently, leveraging their expertise in agriculture, technology, natural resource management, and technical cooperation to drive regional progress. The agreement covers a wide range of areas of cooperation with particular emphasis on the development of value chains and clusters, food safety and quality, quality and management systems, technology transfer, climate smart technologies, and building innovation capacity. We remain fully committed at ECO to building upon the excellent collaboration with Taiwan ICDF within the framework of this agreement over the next four years to not only address the pressing challenges of agriculture development, but also to unlock the vast potential that this sector holds and facilitate the sector in playing an important multifunctional role to the economy of St. Lucia and other countries in the region. In a dynamic effort to strengthen agricultural development with a special emphasis on women in the agriculture sector, the Ministry of Agriculture, in partnership with ICA and the Taiwan Technical Mission, initiated the transformative Where Women Bloom, supporting sustainable livelihoods for women and youth through capacity building and inclusivity in the mushroom industry project. Under this innovative collaboration, 25 women have been equipped with the essential skills in small-scale mushroom production and the operation of mushroom growing units. The partnership of the Taiwanese Technical Mission in support of sustainable livelihoods through a focus on producing real impact with women, their capacity building and promoting inclusivity in market participation and industry representation has been welcomed by ECA. The project Where Women Bloom is predicated upon the realization that small-scale and sustainable mushroom production provides an opportunity to local farmers to diversify their production and to invest in the rural milieu with potential for high return on investment. During the certificate ceremony, each participant received a certificate of completion and the participants were provided with mushroom care kits, symbolizing the project's practical approach to ensuring continued success. We know the supportive function of women in the home economy is critical to food and nutrition security, youth and elderly health and well-being, as well as providing value adding functions at the home level that both improve rural household serving while stimulating the local economy. The Sufra Fishermen's Cooperative Society Limited through an MOU with the government of St. Lucia assumed ownership of the fisheries facility originally constructed by the government of Japan in 2003. 
outfitted with a conference room and office, reception area, shop, assembly area, wharf, locker rooms, washrooms, ice machine and a workshop, the Sufra Fish Landing Facility will serve to promote food security by enhancing the aesthetics and livelihood systems of the Sufra community. The Agriculture Ministry continued its close partnership with the Food and Agriculture Organization FAO, to advance food security and foster healthy eating habits among school children. As part of the school feeding program, several initiatives have been implemented, including an agricultural field trip for primary students aimed at promoting the benefits of locally produced foods. A cohort of primary school students received a unique learning experience as they embarked on an agricultural field trip to the Roseau Valley area. We're hoping that whatever the children plant, they will be able to eat. So their supplies will go directly to the school's um, kitchen and they in turn can, um, so they wouldn't have to buy as much local produce because just last year we updated the menus to include at least 80% of local produce. So school by school, we're trying to achieve that through our, our own gardens, our own kitchen gardens in the schools. Throughout the year, the Department of Forestry has showcased unwavering dedication to fostering sustainable environmental practices, marked by the series of pivotal events and collaborations. The collaboration between the Water Resource Management Agency and the Global Environment Fund's Crew Plus culminated in a crucial workshop refining wastewater guidelines. The primary goal of the workshop was to involve stakeholders from multiple sectors, presenting the draft guidelines for their feedback and validation with participants from fields such as agriculture, water resources, hospitality and youth, among others, ensuring a comprehensive and inclusive approach to wastewater management. This collaborative approach ensures that the guidelines align with the practical needs and requirements of the users, effectively guiding them in sustainable wastewater management practices. Building on the momentum from wastewater initiatives, St. Lucia fervently marked World Wetlands Day with a dedicated cleanup campaign, this collective effort involving the Ministry of Agriculture, private sector entities, and local community members not only highlighted the urgency of waste management, but also accentuated the ecological significance of wetlands. So we want people to understand that when they throw garbage into the rivers, that it comes down and it accumulates in the wetlands, where because of the roots of the system, they trap the garbage in there and that can cause a lot of flooding um, in, in the area. In commemoration of World Wildlife Day, efforts to protect endangered species have received a significant boost with the handover of a new breeding facility for the critically endangered endemic snake species, the St. Lucia racer, also known as the Kues. The collaborative effort involved the Department of Forestry, Flora and Fauna International, Dural Wildlife Conservation Trust, the St. Lucia National Trust and other sector agencies and signals a growing momentum to preserve the world's threatened wildlife. Conservation always have two sides to a coin, a coin like a coin, it has two sides. One side, and I'm just going to get a bit technical, is to say that it is in situ conservation and that is where conservation of the species where it exists and that's Maria Island with regards to the racer facility. The other side is exit to conservation, is conservation where you take it out of the natural habitat and bring it into some form of captivity for conservation. And this was really needed for the racer because of the fact that it was critically endangered and if nothing was done, this species would have been um, reach its demise and be extinct. Keeping on the theme of ecological preservation, St. Lucia's Water Resource Management Agency took proactive measures during World Water Day. Through an enlightening open day event, the community was engrossed in interactive sessions, emphasizing the imperatives of water conservation. With the looming challenges of climate change, this initiative galvanized St. Lucians to recognize and uphold their role in safeguarding this invaluable resource. Despite some advancements being made in achieving universal coverage under SDG 6, the open day held under the theme Accelerating Change highlighted the urgent need to increase the rate of progress. As part of its overarching environmental strategy, the Ministry of Agriculture through the Department of Forestry initiated a proactive collaboration with the Caribbean Community Climate Change Centre. 
Supported by the European Union, this alliance focused on enhancing the nation's water sector resilience through focused interventions such as maintaining stability, reducing sedimentation in the river, and rehabilitating riverbanks. This project represents a significant step forward in St. Lucia's efforts to address the challenges of climate change in the water sector, demonstrating the country's commitment to sustainable development. When you're looking at uh, building resilience in the, um, in the water sector, um, you look at it from a point of view of integrated water resources management and uh, primarily everyone is a stakeholder in that regard. Um, water is life, um, we need water for um, economic and social development and the water primarily comes from the land and all activities take place on the land. So whatever affects the water has on the land it ultimately affects the, um, uh, the water resources at our collection points. And in St. Lucia, our water supply is primarily surface water. So it's waters that we collect in our rivers and our streams. So it is critical that everyone is aware as to what is um, happening and where they can play a role in building resilience, especially, you know, in this era of climate change. In its commitment to mitigate the effects of climate change and address rising costs within the fishing industry, the Department of Fisheries initiated the deployment of a new floating aggregating device in the areas of Sufre, Denry and Miku. The ongoing FAD development program aims to maintain 10 strategically positioned FADs around the island, offering essential support to the local fisherfolk. The FADs, which are anchored to the sea floor using ropes and buoys, are designed to attract fish by mimicking natural floating objects like logs and plants, increasing both fishing productivity and the quality and quantity of fish caught, benefiting the fishing industry and the local economy. The fad belongs to every fisher. It is not because it was deployed in Denry that it belongs to the Denry fishermen and that the Beaufort fishermen, the other fishers, cannot utilize it or access it. It belongs to every fisher folk in St. Lucia. And the policy is that our fishers has to access it on a day-to-day -day basis and there will be no restrictions for them. The culmination of a comprehensive seminar stood as a significant achievement in the ongoing efforts of the collaborative Coast Fish Project. This initiative underscores a shared commitment to bolstering sustainable coastal fisheries management across CARICOM countries. The seminar aimed to align statisticians with the Coast Fish Project's overarching goals by enhancing their proficiency in our program usage, comprehending life history elucidation, CPUE and MCY calculation, emphasizing accurate fish landing data accumulation, and cultivating the ability to craft draft survey plans for the Mosul fish species. Quite often, uh, when we talk about coastal and marine resource management, we refer to fishing port and facility, equipment, sustainable livelihood, and other related issues. These are, these are all very important. However, what is often overlooked and underappreciated is the critical role that statistic and data analysis play in the effective management of these uh, vulnerable uh, resources. The issue of data, the management of fisheries and fisheries related resources, the analysis of data to inform decision making is very, very critical. And I know that R has been in the uh, region for a while and building our capacity to utilize uh, such a software, such a program, which I understood is very, um, you know, very versatile in that, you know, you can use it to, 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 to produce so many results that can be applicable to various aspects of fisheries. St. Lucia's agricultural landscape buzzed with excitement as visionary farmers and key stakeholders were honored on World Bee Day recognizing their key role in propelling the apiculture sector to new heights. 
In attendance were representatives from the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture and the UNDP Global Environment Fund Small Grants Program, crucial players in fostering a conducive environment for agricultural progress. The event also marked the launch of the Apiculture Catalogue. Apiculture for us is a major theme for funding in St. Lucia and for the OECS and we will continue to support the government and people of St. Lucia in that respect. We really want to see this country rise to its fullest potential. If you look carefully, we have the biodiversity. If you look at the amount of endemic species, the amount of forests we still have, both dry, xerophytic and rainforests. We have a general uh, resource management approach to our resources in St. Lucia and we have people who are beginning to show great interest. We need to stir that pot even further and we need to attract more people. Continuing with proactive moves to enhance the productivity and efficiency of apiculture farmers, the Ministry of Agriculture launched an eight-week farmer field school program, empowering farmers with practical knowledge and skills, addressing production deficiencies and promoting sustainable growth through theory and practical exercises, covering hive management, beekeeping best practices, disease control, honey harvesting, quality standards, and marketing strategies. The Sustainable Honey Production Farmer Field School Program's closing ceremony celebrated the transformative journey toward responsible and sustainable beekeeping, uniting 33 enthusiasts in the pursuit of apiculture excellence. In addition to beekeeping techniques, the program also included essential first aid training, to ensure the safety and well-being of both beekeepers and bees. The prevalent challenges within the pork subsector were also highlighted as the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development, in collaboration with the Food and Agriculture Organization FAO, undertook an extensive assessment delving into the current state of the pork and ginger subsectors. Key stakeholders came together to examine the value chain and to proactively tackle the issues plaguing the sectors. An analysis of our food import bill shows that the import of meats are only second to agri-processed foods. And among agri-processed foods, juices are among the highest we see on the import bill. With the import of pork and chicken being dominant. Further, in keeping with our CARICOM 25 by 25 commitment of reducing our food import bill by 25% by the year 2025. We have deliberately focused on the pork value chain to reduce the imports and enhance our food security. As we conclude our Agricultural Review 2023, these stories form a tapestry of initiatives that have shaped St. Lucia's agricultural narrative. From workshops and festivals, to strategic collaborations, making headway for more improved streamlining for food security efforts in the overall ministerial work program, each event is a testament to the resilience, growth and collective dedication within the nation's agricultural community. Until next time, this is Anisia Antoine signing off.